Hello, my name is Leopoldo Armesto and in this presentation I'm going to talk about the electronics and particularly the recommended materials that we are going where we are proposing uh, to use in this course. So this is the outline of the presentation. I will talk about Arduino uh, shields, Arduino Uno shields, and then specifically I will talk about how to use an Arduino with a sensor shield and uh, how to use a Wemos D1R32 with a sensor shield. Then I will introduce the electronic components that we propose for this uh, course and some of the uh, connection tables where to connect things in order to properly uh, uh, operate. So, as you already might know, uh, Arduino, particularly Arduino Uno, uh, has a specific, uh, let's say, uh, shape that has become somehow a, an, as a an standard for many uh, other electronics and boards. So we can put on top of the Arduino Uno a shield. A shield is a, a generic electronic or, a, or an electronic for a specific purpose. Here we can see some of the uh, classic shields that we can find uh, over the internet, like the Bretor shield, the Proto shield, in which we can build our own circuit, specialized circuits on, on them. Or the Arduino sensor shield, in which we can have access to many pins, as we will see later, to connect many other uh, sensors and modules for, for any purpose. But there are specialized shields. That, let's say that there are shields that include all the necessary, let's say, electronics to uh, satisfy one purpose, like the Ethernet shield, the Wi-Fi shield, or the Bluetooth shield, in order to give you connection or, uh, for this, um, or to the, uh, for, from the point of view of the Arduino, so you have this uh, extended uh, feature if you use this kind of shields. Or also the multi-sensor and multi-function shield in which you can play with many sensors and, and, uh, and um, buttons, buzzers, displays in order to, uh, let's say, learn how to use uh, or how to program with Arduino. Or the motor shields in, that will allow you to, they provide you the drivers, the necessary drivers to drive, let's say in this case, uh, stepper motors or uh, DC motors. So one of, our, one of the approaches that we will follow will use an Arduino you know, and an Arduino sensor shield. And the, the reason is that this shield, as you can see here in the picture, it gives you access to many pins on the Arduino board. And particularly, it's interesting that it, it gives you access to many ground and, let's say, power, shield, uh, power pins. Sorry. So you can connect many other sensors and servos, let's say motors like servos, uh, uh, screens like uh, LCD screens, any kind of sensor, you can connect them and all of them will require some kind of ground pin and a, a power pin. And so with this board you have access to all these pins uh, because as you can see here, all this, uh, this pin here with this row with the V, it's a power pin and this row here with the J is a ground pin and also here, this is a different kind of board, but it's exactly, essentially the same. This is the power pin, the, the power pins, and these are the, the, the ground pins. But one thing you must know about Arduino Uno is that not all pins can be used for any purpose. You can see here in the table that uh, all pins can be used as a digital input and output signals, uh, but only specific pins, the, the ones that are named as A, from A0 to A5, can be used as analog inputs and only few specific pins can be used as PWM pins because they have, let's say, dedicated resources and hardware resources in order to generate these kind of signals. Another approach would be to use an ESP32 board. In particular, I would like to uh, highlight the Wemos D1R32 and their compatible versions and similar versions to this board that, let's say, uh, has the same Arduino Uno you know, format, and that's why we can use, on top of it, we can use an Arduino sensor shield. The only inconvenience of this, or there are too many inconveniences uh, by using this approach, but we can, um, they can be overcome, and, uh, and of course they uh, give you much more, let's say, power for um, uh, computational resources, they, they give you Wi-Fi connection, as we saw in the previous presentation. So, the first inconvenience is that the ESP32 has, let's say, its, no, its own pin names, as you can see here on the first column of the table. 
And when you put in the Arduino sensor shield on top of it, since this sensor shield was designed to, in order to work with the Arduino, they use or you, you, you see a different name on top. So when you connect, let's say, to, on the Arduino sensor shield, then you use the Arduino naming pins and compared to the ESP32 pins. The advantage is that, uh, in this case, all pins can be used as a digital and input signals, no problem with that. All pins can be used as, as PWM signals, and some pins can be used as analog signals, but we have much more pins compared to the Arduino Uno. And particularly, it's important to highlight or to mention that uh, if you use pins uh, as analog signals, I mean, uh, when the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi is enabled, you should use only the ones that are uh, belonging to the EDC1 that I put here, because uh, otherwise the others, uh, you cannot use them if, you, if this, uh, the, the, the Wi-Fi antenna is enabled. But there's a trick. You can always disconnect the Wi-Fi antenna, read the analog signal and reconnect it, and since this is very fast, you won't notice any kind of disconnection on your, on your software. And we, we use that trick in, uh, in, many, in many ways. So, uh, this is, uh, these are the sensors that we propose for our intelligent house. Uh, let me recap um, uh, what they are. So, as analog sensors, we use four of them. Uh, one for measuring the temperature, which is an N a thermistor, it's an uh, NTC uh, sensor. We also use for uh, measuring uh, the light of the environment, we use a photoresistor, which is, is known as LDR. Uh, we also use a gas sensor in order to detect the smoke and also we use a sound sensor that uses a mic in order to uh, measure, let's say, the, the noise uh, on the ambient. Also we use two digital sensors, one which is a flame sensor to detect fire and another one which is uh, called a PIR sensor, it's an infrared sensor that detects the presence of, of, of movement of, a, of an object. And these are the six sensors that we, we propose to use in our project. Apart from the sensors, we also want to use actuators. These are, uh, let's say, devices that we want to control from the point of view of the Arduino uh, or the microcontroller. Like in this case, a passive buzzer that will generate frequency and we can generate some sounds, like an alarm effect. We also, we, we're going to use um, mini fan uh, in order to uh, pr produce some kind of cooling uh, on the living room and also we are going to use um, a breadboard with some uh, resistors in order to generate some kind of heater. Uh, we're going to use three servos, one uh, for each of the windows that we have on, in, on our intelligent house and also we're going to use um, our RGB LED strip that's in order to provide uh, lightning to our, um, in this case, is the bedroom, and also uh, a screen in order to display data on the living room. And of course, we have additional electronic components such as, in this case, MOF MOSFET, in order to provide the necessary, uh, let's say, uh, uh, power to the, to the, in this case, the heater and the and the and the fan and a battery in order to, to provide the necessary power, of course, and some cables. They are known as DuPont cables. And in this slide here, I, um, the idea is to show you where uh, we propose to connect things. Since we are trying to make things compatible with uh, the Arduino Uno and the ESP32, in this proposal, or in this connection proposal, we have taken into account that some pins were connected to the ADC1 of the ESP32, so we can skip the problem with the Wi-Fi uh, connection that I mentioned before. And for that, we, since we're using four analog sensors, these sensors were connected particularly to A2, A5, A3, and uh, A2 of the Arduino sensor shield. And also, we have connected the, the, uh, the devices that require PWM uh, a signal such as the heater and the fan in which we can regulate, let's say, the amount of heat or the amount or the, the let's say the the, 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 the power of, of the, the mini fan, how, how fast it rotates. These are specialized signals that uh, have been connected to D3 and D7 so they are compatible with the Arduino pins and the rest of the signals in general could be connected anywhere but 
and also sorry the buzzer the buzzer also requires a PWM signal but the rest of the signals are digital uh, inputs or outputs and could be connected anywhere in, indeed okay well in this presentation uh, we have been talking about the recommended materials thank you very much <laughs>